Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. This episode is going to be the first of a two-part series where I'm going to let you follow along as I create a 3D, full-size, full-scale 3D rendering of a guitar body. And I'm going to be doing that using Adobe Illustrator and Rhinoceros 3D. And I'll be doing all the work on my iMac. Now, uh, the same software programs are also available for Windows PCs, and they work pretty much the same. And in this uh, first episode, I'm going to cover the initial stages of creating a 2D design using Adobe Illustrator. And then in the next episode, I will uh, convert those 2D shapes into a full-size, full-scale 3D rendering. So let's jump in and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is open up Adobe Illustrator, and then I'm going to create a new document that's 48 by 36 inches. That's large enough to incorporate an entire guitar body. Next, I'll drag down a guide, which I place right at the center of the document. Next, I'm going to place a reference image. In this case, I'm using this nice little Ibanez RG. And then I will try to place that uh, as close to that center as possible. Now, as you can see, the guitar is not the actual correct size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from right at the front of the nut all the way back to the front of the saddles on the bridge. And that'll give me an idea of what the size of the image is. And when I check my property panels, I can see it's 11.2738 inches. So what I'll do is I'll copy that dimension. And I use a website, so I'll call it my browser. And this website is uh, Proportionator. And what I'll do is I will paste in that original size, the 11.2738. Then I'll type in the size I want, which is 25.5 inches. And that shows me it needs to be 226.19%. So I'll copy that. I'll jump back into Illustrator. And then I will select these elements. And then I will uh, hit my scale tool. Uh, and then in the uniform box, I'll paste in that 226.19. And that enlarges the entire image to the correct size. And if I want to check it, I can just select that line I drew. And I can see over here it's 25.5003. So I'll delete the line. And then I will uh, cut the image and then fit the window and then paste it. That places it right smack in the center of my document. Next thing I want to do is I want to reduce the opacity to about 20% because I don't want it to be uh, full on 100%. It makes it hard to see as I'm doing the drawing. Now I can take my pen tool and start to draw the perimeter shape of the guitar body. And I do this really quickly here. And once I have the initial drawing done, I can start to drag out my uh, handles for the Bezier curves to get the shape uh, precisely what I want. And it only takes a few minutes to do this, but uh, the objective is to keep the drawing simple, as few points as possible, but at the same time finesse it to get it as uh, close to the um, reference image as possible. And once I'm happy with that, the next step will be to create the neck. And to design the website, I'm going to call up my browser, and I'm going to go to a website called FretFine 2D. And what this will do is allow me to design my fretboard online. And I'll type in my scale length, which is 25.5. I'll leave the string width at the nut, what it is, uh, the default measurement. But I'm going to change the string width at the bridge to 2.08 inches, and then the overhang to 1.25 inches. I'll leave that calculation method 12. It, I'm not even sure what it does. And for the number of frets, even though I'm going to use 24 frets, I'm going to add another fret to make it 25. And what that will do is it will add a line at the end, which represents the end of the fretboard. So then I can save this to my computer. And I will just simply navigate out to the folder where I want to save all the parts for this design. And then I'll save it. Next, I can jump back into Adobe Illustrator and open up that fretboard. And it comes up like this. So I will select the entire fretboard, and then I'm going to group it into one 
element and copy that. And then what I'll do is I will jump back into my drawing and I will paste it. Next I can rotate it to the correct uh, orientation and then I need to position it. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in and I'm going to take the center line that was created in that fretboard drawing and I will place that on the center uh, reference mark that I put earlier and then I will move the strings right up to the front edge of the saddles and at that point I have my neck positioned. And with the neck position, I can start working on building my neck pocket. And to do that, I'll zoom in, and I have to make sure that where the body intersects the perimeter, I have anchor points that represent the start and finish of the neck pocket. So I'll uh, either move those into correct position, and if necessary, I can zoom in and add an anchor point where that uh, body contour in, intersects the perimeter of the neck contour. Now I'm going to drag a guide between the 24th and 25th fret and that's going to represent the end of the neck pocket because I want the fretboard to slightly overhang, sort of like it does on a Stratocaster. And then I'm going to draw the perimeter shape of the neck pocket. Now with the basic shape of the neck pocket complete, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select and hide the fretboard as well as my reference image. That way I can just see the body and the neck pocket itself. Then what I have to do is I have to select the anchor point on that front neck pocket curve and I will copy it and then paste it right on top. Next I will select the body itself and I will hide that. So now you can see the elements that form the neck pocket. And then all I have to do is join that front curve with the rest of the pocket, and that will complete the neck pocket shape. And now I will unhide the fretboard and my reference image so I can continue on. And the next step is going to be to draw my pickup pockets. And to do that, I'm going to create a rectangular shape that is 1.625 inches wide and 2.875 inches tall. Next I'll create another rectangle right over the center of that one, but this one is going to be 0.625 inches wide and 3.5 inches uh, uh, tall. And as you can see, we're getting the basic shape of that pickup pocket. But what I need to do is round the corners. So I'll start out by typing in a quarter of an inch radius, which I think is a little bit too much. So I'll back it off and I will type in uh, 0.125 or 1 8 inch radius. And I think that's better. And then I will select that first box that I drew and do the same thing to the corners of, of it. I'll add that eighth inch radius. Then I will select the two boxes and using Pathfinder I will combine them into one shape. Now I can hold down my option key and drag a copy and position it where the bridge pickup will be located. And that pretty much completes the pickup design. Now I get to do the bridge positioning. The bridge that I'm going to use for this guitar is a hip shot six string. So I'll visit their website where I can open up a PDF of the dimensions and I will save that uh, to my computer in the, the folder where I'm keeping all those elements and then I'll go back to Illustrator to my drawing and I will open up a new document for that PDF and once I have that open I can select a top view of the bridge copy it and then paste it into my drawing and at this point what I'll do is I will position the bridge right at the end of the scale length of the strings from my fretboard drawing. And I can actually select the front of the saddles and position them exactly at the end of those strings. And that 
is a precise positioning of the bridge. Now what I have to do is draw the holes for the bridge mount as well as the string through holes. And to do all this I'm going to jump back out to this PDF and you can see that the mounting hole is 0.178 inches and the distance between those holes is 0.875. So I will select an ellipses tool and I will start with the middle mounting screw hole and I will type in 0.178 inches for height and width so the diameter will be 0.178 inches and then I will uh, call up my preferences and I will change the keyboard increment to 0.875 that distance between the holes and then I will hold down my option key and press the up arrow and that will position the upper uh, mounting hole and then I will do the same but with the uh, down arrow to position the lower mounting screw. Now for the string through holes, the size of those holes is 0.156 inches. The distance apart is 0.416. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw these off of the actual um, reference image, sort of out here in the open space to make it easier to see. So I'll type in, uh, I'll drop my uh, ellipses tool and type in 0.156 inches and then I will change my uh, preferences, the keyboard increment, to 0 0.416. And then using option arrow, down arrow key, I'll just keep hitting the down arrow key until I have the number of holes that I need, which of course is six, since it's a six string guitar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle from the center of the uh, top hole to the bottom center of the lower hole and then I will select those and cut them. Next I will zoom into the bridge and I will paste those elements. And I can grab that center of the rectangle and place it right over my center guide. And then what I have to do is move the holes so that they are in line with the screw holes. And as you can see here, the screw holes are actually the difference between the 0.708 and 0.484 dimensions. So I'll bring up my calculator and I'll type in 0.708 and subtract 0.484 and that gives me the difference which is 0.224 inches. So I'll go back to the drawing, call up my preferences and type in 0.224 in the keyboard increments then I'll hit my uh, right uh, arrow and that will position that, those holes precisely. And then I can get rid of that rectangle that I drew. Now at this point I'm going to unlock my guides because I want to delete these, these two guides here that aren't really uh, of use anymore. And then I'll lock my remaining center guide because that's something I'm always going to be referring to. Now the next step is to position my controls, the, uh, the knobs for the pots and the switch that I'll be using. And the pots that I'm going to use have a shaft of um, 0.3125 inches in diameter. So I will draw a hole for the volume pot. And then what I'm going to do is draw a slightly larger half inch diameter hole, which will be for the uh, three-way toggle switch that I would use for this guitar. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these two items. Well, first I'll position my uh, volume pot where I want it. Then I'll copy these two and then paste it right in front. Then I'm going to grab my rotate tool, click it in the center of that switch hole, and then I can rotate the copy around until I have it positioned where I want. That way I can be assured that the hole for the tone knob is going to be the same distance from the switch as the volume. And that's just for symmetrical purposes. Now I have my controls basically positioned. So what I want to do now is create the elements for the control cavity. And to do that I'm going to do an offset of 0.5 inches. And what that will do is create an inner line of the body. It's, it's the same shape as a body, it's just uh, half an inch in from that. Then I'll bring down a guide 
which will represent the top of that cavity. And then I'm going to place an anchor where that guide intersects that inner line. What I can do next is delete the parts of that line that I don't need. And what I'm left with is that lower curve, which represents that lower part of the control cavity. So I'll finish it off. And you can start to see how that shape is, is taking form. But what I want to do is I want to round the uh, edges. So I'll drag my uh, radius mark in to create a nice round shape. Now this is actually going to represent the shape of my control cavity cover. For the cavity itself, I have to create another offset, which will be 0.375 inches. Now you can kind of get an idea of how this is taking shape. And what I want to do now is select my control holes that I created and position those right where I want them to be. Now I realize that the shape of this control cavity may not make a lot of sense right now, but it will once I start to do the 3D rendering in the next episode. What I'm ready to do now is I'm going to hide my fretboard the reference image as well as the bridge drawing. And that leaves me with just the body and the pickup cavities, neck cavity, and uh, control cavity. And what I'm going to do is create a bounding box which encompasses the whole outer body shape. And this will be used for positioning the body in the next step. Next I will select the elements and then copy them. And then I'm going to create a new document. And this document is going to be 14 by 18 inches, 14 inches wide, 18 inches tall. And that represents the size of my guitar body blanks that I use. Now I'm going to create a box uh, on this document that's 14 by 18 inches, the same size as the blank. Now I can paste in those elements that I copied for the body and I will rotate those to the correct orientation. I'm going to move those out of the way for the moment. I'm selecting that center bounding box, and I'm going to place that exactly on the center of this document. That way I know the body is perfectly centered on the blank. And then, just to kind of uh, make things consistent, I'll select all the elements, make sure they're the same weight, uh, there should be no fills, and I'll make sure that the strokes are all the same color black. And then at this point, I can save the document to my computer. And that's what I'll be using when I go into Rhino to create the 3D shape. So I'll, I'll call this Guitar Body for 3D. And then I'll save that into the folder where I'm saving all the elements for this project. Okay, well that's all the time I have for this week's episode. In the next episode, I'm going to take the 2D drawing that I created, the guitar body for 3D, and I'm going to import that into Rhinoceros 3D and build my full-size, full-scale 3D model. So until the next episode, take care and we'll see you soon. <laughs>